Turning back to the major averages now, joining us is Adil Zaman, partner at Wall Street Alliance Group. Thank you so much for joining us. Want your take on today's market action. Earlier this week, at the start of the fourth quarter, we had guests on the show who said this was going to be the beginning of a bear market rally. Were they correct? Are we seeing that rally finally stopping in its tracks and continuing with the spare market moving forward? Great to be with you, Asia. So we are of the school of thought that this volatility in the market is going to continue because of the magnitude of the issues that we are facing. Uh, with interest rates going up, obviously, in our opinion, that's going to lead to an economic slowdown. On top of that, you know, with the dollar strengthening, it's going to negatively impact the earnings of the multinationals. And what we're also seeing is that what is different this time is that the investor anxiety levels are very high because it's been a very long time before we had a prolonged uh, bear market. So investors have forgotten what it feels like. The last lengthy bear market was back in 2008. So for those reasons, we feel that this volatility in the market is going to continue up until the end of this year. How are you advising investors at this point to deal with the uncertainty and the volatility in the market? So we, we are of the school of thought that, you know, certainly there's there's issues over here, but it's not, we have to look at it in perspective. It's not an Armageddon. It's not the end of the world. You know, if you, if you look at consumer spending, which is roughly about 70% of our GDP, that's still relatively strong. And consumers are spending on things that they couldn't during the pandemic, like travel and entertainment. Consumers are sitting on about $2 trillion in savings. Unemployment is at a historic low of 3.7%. Contrast that to the previous recession where it was north of 14%. And if you look at the housing market, it's slowing down, but it's not falling off the cliff for the simple reason that we have a housing shortage. You know, For the past decade, there's been an under construction in housing, which has not kept up with population growth. So what we are advising clients is that you know, if your time horizon is long-term, this market decline is actually a good opportunity. All right. It, and anything else you can share when it comes to the housing market moving forward? I think, you know, the housing market, you know, that's that's a significant part of the wealth of, uh, of investors. You know, I think that as far as the housing is concerned, uh, th there's if you co contrast to what happened in 2008, there's no subprime in the market right now. If you look at uh, people's home equities, they're, they're really high. The people that have mortgages right now, the average FICA score is north of 700. So we feel that the housing market will be resilient here. And that's part of the reason why we feel that eventually the market is going to bottom out and then start to go back up. Also gleaning any insights when it comes to rent, we're hearing uh, rumblings about a rental crisis. We're also seeing people wanting to invest in commercial real estate potentially here. What are your insights at this point? So, uh, you know, obviously what's happening is that because mortgage rates have doubled, right, from 3%, it's now north of 6%. And if you're going to, rather than a lot of people are postponing uh, buying. And for that reason, they are renting. And that's why we feel that rentals will, will start to go up. And we've started to see that over here in New York City as well. Uh, so, And the sellers don't want to sell because they'd rather just stay put and wait, wait it out till rates eventually come down. But more importantly, what we're also seeing is that you know over the past decade, in terms of investment strategy Asia, what's worked is focusing on the passive investment focusing on high growth areas of the market. But we feel that that strategy is going to fail over the next decade because investors will need to be more tactical. They will need to focus more on relatively recession resilient businesses. They will need to focus more on companies that pay dividend, which we feel is, is good inflation hedge, but in, enhances portfolio returns in the long term as well. Yeah, as you mentioned, those recession resilient businesses, what sort of sectors, what sort of companies do you have your eye on right now? So what we feel is that, you know, again, investors should be more tactical in this environment, not passive. And again, the focus should be on recession resiliency. And uh, one of the areas that we like, for example, is cloud, you know, irrespective 
or whether the economy goes up or down, businesses do have to prioritize cloud spending. And cloud spending is anticipated to increase by about 16% year over year. So that's a sector that we, that we like, we are constructive on. We're also seeing that the revenge spending in travel and entertainment is very strong. You know, people are, were deprived of it during the pandemic and now they are spending there. So that's another area that we like. And also we, what we are seeing is that basically uh, because of greater access to healthcare, life expectancy is increasing globally. So because with that, what happens is that you get population growth and that's generally good for large drug manufacturers because this means a greater customer base for their products. Really interesting. I'm like furiously taking notes over here. I do want to bring up one of those sectors that you mentioned in revenge spending. I think this is fascinating because typically when we move into a period of economic uncertainty or potentially recession, as has been alluded by multiple guests on the show, and also just some signs, warning signs for Americans moving forward that we could be entering even more of a difficult time in this market, potentially still seeing a bottom moving downwards uh, anywhere between 5 to 15 percent, according to some guests. You would think that revenge spending may pull back discretionary spending as we move into this holiday season. How long are you anticipating this revenge to stick around? I think that, you know, and this is really the ironic part of it, right? Like the Federal Reserve is really trying their best to slow down the economy, but it's not slowing down. Unemployment, people are still spending. Unemployment is still very sticky at 3.7%. Uh, we feel that is why we feel that certain areas of the market, this uh, this this revenge spending uh, is going to continue, especially in the service area. What we're seeing is that on the product side, you know, it's going to cool off a bit, which we've already started seeing in the goods goods side. But in the service side, we actually see it accelerating into next year because business travel will resume. People will start going out for more conferences. Um, you know, and they will continue to travel for uh, vacations as well. So I think the service side, we do see it resilient. And that is why we are constructive on the markets for the long term. All right, Adil Zaman, partner at Wall Street Alliance Group. So good to have your insight. Thank you so much for joining us here on Shutter News.